Hey guys, Richard Holder here. I'm back from West Tech and it's time for a good old fashioned intake shootout. We're talking single plane versus dual plane. And you know how I do it. We're testing it on two motors. In this video, we're going to take a look at the age old question, single plane versus dual plane on two different Ford motors. First of all, we ran a single plane versus a dual plane on a mildly modified 351 Windsor. Then we ran a single plane versus a dual plane on a mildly modified 4V Cleveland. Now we know the Cleveland has more head flow. So here's my question. Which one of these combinations is going to like the single plane? Which one of these combinations is going to like the dual plane? Why are we asking all these questions? Let's get to the answers. To demonstrate what happens in our comparison between single plane and dual plane intakes, we ran them on two different motors as I described. We have a 351 Windsor and a 351 Cleveland. So we'll start out with the 351 Windsor. It's probably more common certainly in the United States, although I know my Australian guys love the Cleveland and for good reason. It's got a lot of cylinder head flow and can make a lot of power. Certainly a lot more than a factory Windsor can because the Windsor heads <laughs> Not nearly as good as a 4 Cleveland stuff. I mean, a stock Windsor head flow is probably 155 or 160 CFM, and a stock 4 Cleveland flows 275. So it's a big difference in airflow, and therefore a big difference in power potential. But I want to demonstrate what a, the intake swap does on two fairly mild combinations you know not not r wild and racy because we know if we're going to run lots of rpm and lots of power that we're definitely going to go with the single plane and we know if we're going to run a stock or very mild combination that we would go with the dual plane but what about that middle ground what happens during the transition point where it's a little bit good over here and a little bit good over here what do you do so that's kind of what i want to demonstrate here so the first one is a 351 windsor and it was actually a crate motor it started out as a crate motor from ford racing it was a 351 this particular one had been modified. It was about nine and a half to one. It had a dish piston in it. It had a camshaft that was odd. It was a hydraulic roller. It was 575 lift, but it was 575 lift with a 1.5 rocker, which is unusual for a, <laughs> for a 351 Windsor. The camshaft was, as I said, uh, 575 lift, 228, 234 degree duration and 110 degree lobe separation angle. It had a set of Holly heads on it. You can see in the photo what the actual part number of the head is. I don't think Holly even offers his head anymore. The test was run long ago. It had a set of inch and three quarter headers. Um, the block, the crate motor actually came as an SVO block, which was cool, which meant that we could make a lot of power with this thing if we wanted to. In this particular combination, it was fairly mild, so it wasn't a big deal. But it was nice to have that strength to start out with if we like stuck forge internals in it and really want to you know, put some boost to it. It'd be kind of cool. Um, we ran both of these combinations with the same 750 Holly XP carburetor. We also ran a brawler carburetor on this, and that video is up also. You guys can check that out where we compared a, a low dollar carburetor to the high dollar carburetor. And, and in these um, combinations where we're not making a ton of power, the brawler carburetor, which is a, <laughs> is a good option, makes every bit as much power as the, um, as the real expensive XP carburetor. So that's kind of cool. But we ran our 351 Windsor first with an RPM intake manifold. And we'll take a look here. I want to make sure that this was a, it was an air gap manifold, which is kind of cool. The, we find that the air gap sometimes is a little bit better than the standard RPM, although sometimes they're identical. So we ran that with the 750 carburetor and the inch and three quarter long tube headers. It had an MSD distributor. And as always, we did a little bit of jetting to try to optimize the combination. And we did a timing sweep starting from 25 degrees all the way up past 35 degrees. Degrees. In this case, this combination wanted to run best at 35 degrees of total timing. So on the on the carbureted stuff, normally we would run a lock distributor. We don't run a curve. So this thing had 35 degrees of timing from start to finish, and that seemed to where it make make best power. So we first ran it with the dual plane intake and our 351 run with the dual plane intake manifold and that 750 carburetor made 420 horsepower and 428.7 foot-pounds of torque. So we'll call that 429 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we installed the single plane. In this case, the single plane was an Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake, very common for a 351 or a 302. Um, very common single plane, used an awful lot. And here is our single plane. And what we typically see on single plane and dual plane comparisons is 
the single plane will make more power at the top, the dual plane will make more power at the bottom, and then the combination kind of determines where that crossover is. Um, sometimes it could be uh, on a like on a 351 or a stroker 351 a 408 the crossover may be very low um, the single plane might start making more power at 4000 rpm let's say but in this case the crossover was about 40 between 4900 and 5000 rpm right in here right in this range where the single plane started making a little bit more power than the dual plane below that point the difference was substantial at 3900 rpm we had 402 foot-pounds for the single plane and 426 foot-pounds for the dual plane. So you can see in that area from 3,000 or 3,200 all the way up to almost 5,000, the dual plane was definitely better. And it would feel more responsive and, uh, you know, it would have good throttle response and would have more torque down low. So it would be a lot more fun to drive around as a daily driver in that RPM range. But as we cross over the 5,000 RPM range, we see that the single plane made a little bit more power, but that's the thing. It only made a little bit more. I mean, we're talking about on, on the single plane, it made 423 horsepower. So that's a, that's a whopping three horsepower gain. And there were areas where, you know, it, it's, again, it's only here at uh, 5,300 RPM. You're talking about 408 versus 404. So it's four horsepower. So it's almost... <laughs> insignificant. Now we've seen gains or changes uh, in comparisons between the single plane and the dual plane on the other applications where the difference is much more pronounced. But on a mild combination like this where we're making 420 to 425 horsepower, um, the dual plane obviously is a much better choice on this combination. And here's a here's a fairly good indicator. And this is something that I look at that tells me that this is a fairly mild combination. The fact that we made more torque than horsepower tells us that this is a fairly mild combination. If we want, if we if we have much more camshaft in it and much more head flow, what will happen is we will start to make more peak horsepower than we will peak torque. And when you do that, <laughs> and when you go, when you take that to the extreme, when it's a drag race motor, you make a lot more horsepower than you make torque. But that's always kind of a good indicator, and that shows us that on a combination where you're making more torque than horsepower, dual plane in intake. Definitely the way to go on the Windsor. Now let's check out the Cleveland. Our second test motor was actually a 351 Cleveland. This was a Cleveland that I used for a number of tests, including a building a reproduction of a Boss 1971 Boss 351 Cleveland, also a Cobra Jet, and I used it for a lot of different testing intake manifolds and camshaft and cylinder heads and stuff. This was a good little Boss motor, and I actually wish I still had it. But in this configuration, we ran it. It was a Boss or a 351 Cleveland. It was bored 30 over. It had a set of forged Pro pistons in it with factory uh, reconditioned connecting rods and the stock crank. It also was equipped with 4V heads. Now, originally these 4V heads were had the non-adjustable valve train in it, which we upgraded by putting um, rocker studs in and guide plates so that we could run an adjustable valve train in it, although we wouldn't really need it with, uh, we ran a hydraulic flat tap at camshaft for this test. It was a Comp Extreme Energy 284 hydraulic flat tap it. And it was a 584, 588 lift, a 240, 246 degree duration split, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. All the testing was run with a 750 HP carburetor. This was actually before the XP stuff. I may, may have been before the XP stuff was even available. Um, we compared the Edelbrock RPM air gap intake manifold for the 351 versus a Parker funnel web for the 351. And this was an interesting test for a number of reasons. One, the RPM air gap was designed not for the 4V head port size, but actually for the Edelbrock Cleveland head, which is, has a much smaller port, kind of in between a two valve and a four valve. So we'll call that Edelbrock more likely, more like a three valve, let's say. Um, but it, it was um, smaller in size, so there was a mismatch, but luckily the mismatch was going the right way. So you had a smaller intake port going, feeding a bigger head port. So all of it worked out very well. And in, in the test that I'm not showing you here, but we had run it and that video is up also, we compared the RPM air gap to the factory dual plane intake manifold and the RPM air gap was up by about between 20 and 25 horsepower over the factory intake manifold. So it's definitely a big step up, even though it has a port mismatch on a big 4V head. Now we first ran this with the dual plane combination, the, the RPM air gap, and equipped with that intake manifold, our 351 Cleveland, 
produced 450 horsepower, 450.4, and you can see a nice flat torque curve here with a peak of 411 foot-pounds. Do we have one that's higher than that? 411 foot-pounds of torque. So this combination did very well, nice and flat. The 4V heads have plenty of airflow. They can support a lot more power than this. They can support 100 more horsepower than this. So if we had enough camshaft and everything, this, uh, that combination, you know, the cylinder heads flow really well as a 4V. But here's what happened when we put the funnel web on here. And as you can see, the funnel web <laughs> technically did make more power. It actually made almost the same power. Both of them were right at 450 horsepower. Uh, it made a little bit more power past 6,500, but everywhere else was down on power. The single plane was down on power compared to the dual plane. And this sometimes happens. Um, I was hoping that with the extra head flow offered by the 4V heads, that the single plane would kind of come into its own. But on this combination, this motor did not like the single plane. I've had really good luck with funnel webs, um, I think this might have been the first test that I ran on a 351 with a funnel web. We also ran it on another 383 stroker, 351 Cleveland version. Um, but this was the first time I've seen it make less power everywhere. Usually I've run them a lot on the 302s and 347 Windsor style motors. And the funnel web on those combinations works very well. As a matter of fact, it usually is a little bit better than a Victor Jr. single plane is. The funnel web works a little better. But on this 351 Cleveland, here are the results. The dual plane definitely is the way to go, even all the way out past 6,500 RPM. You're not really giving up any peak power, and all you're doing is gaining a ton of average power. Because if we look down here at 42 or 4,300 RPM, we have 373 foot-pounds for the single plane versus 410 or 411 foot-pounds for the dual plane. So you definitely feel that in the, with a single plane, it would be a lot less responsive and, um, you know, it just wouldn't be snappy and, and fun driving around as much as the dual plane. And since you don't give anything up, there's really not much of a, there's really not much of a choice between the two on this 351 Cleveland. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from our comparison with the 351 Windsor and the 351 Cleveland comparing the single plane and dual plane intake manifolds? First of all, I have to tell you, I was a little surprised by the Cleveland. I mean, I figured, hey, this thing has enough displacement. It has enough compression. It has a reasonably healthy cam. I mean, 240 degrees of duration at 50 and plenty of lift. It has lots of head flow. I thought for sure that that combination, if any of them, would definitely like the single plane intake manifold, but that's why I test so much. I mean, right off the bat, I thought the mild 351 Windsor, that's definitely gonna like the dual plane and the dual plane was really good. I mean, an RPM air gap is already a good manifold. It has a broad range. It makes a lot of power. So on that combination, I sure figured the dual plane was going to be better, and it kind of was. But on the Cleveland, I thought, hey, maybe the dual plane is going to show something, especially at, th at the top. But it did not. And again, that's why I test this stuff, because sometimes you just never know. And I like to be surprised. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.